And now we arrive at the Gospel. And you will see uh, that this chapter 10, you see, uh, rhymes in its own way with the material that we had uh, back in Acts, you see, uh, about uh, being healed, being taken care of. And now it's in the name of Jesus. And that's what we're going to see now, you see. So we have, I am the good shepherd. Well, what's the good shepherd? You know, who is this good shepherd? Um, well, there's a prophecy about a shepherd coming. Uh, and it's when uh, 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 this is chapter 34 of the prophecy of Ezekiel where the Lord is condemning the shepherds, the leaders of the people. You take the best of their flock, you eat it, you know, you don't care about your flocks and um, uh I'm going to get another shepherd. And the text is, you see, um, I will save my sheep so that they may no longer be despoiled and I will judge between one sheep and another. I will appoint one shepherd over them to pastor them, my servant David, Avdi David. Who is that servant David? It's the Ben David. It's the son of David. The Messiah, the, he is the one. You see, the last Davidic king was uh, Hezekiah, I think, in 586 B.C. All the other kings, when they had them, were all not Davidic. Most of them were crooks, you know. But they yearned, they knew that the Messiah was going to be a Ben David. So when all these people are calling out, Yeshua ben David. What are they saying? You are the son of David. You are the one. You are the heir. Which is what the angel told Mary, right? He's going to inherit the house of Jacob and sit on the throne of David, his father. He is the son of David. He's the son of David. And so finally, they waited from 586, almost six full centuries. And you see, this is the grace of the Jewish people. They never let go. They read this. They knew that God would be faithful. They didn't think they don't have to wait 600 years. And then when he came, they didn't get him. Uh, but they're going to get another chance. Uh, so, you see, this is what the text is saying. I will appoint one shepherd over them to pasture them, my servant David. He shall pasture them and be their shepherd. I, the Lord, will be their God. There you have it, right? Elohim. That's that's some um, covenant terms. You know, you will be my people, I will be your God. That's an offering of a covenant. It's echoed, for instance, we have in the Song of Songs, Dodi li va no kilo. My beloved to me and I to him. That's beloved dimension of covenant. Covenant. And when they blew it, God inspired Jeremiah, it's got to be a new covenant. So at the Last Supper, Jesus said, this is my blood of the new covenant. It's going to be there. And that new covenant, as the prophets already foresaw, is the Holy Spirit. I will put my law in them. I will write it on their hearts. Ezekiel, I will give them my spirit. So now we know the new law. The new law is the Holy Spirit. In fact, Aquinas says, if you read the Gospels only according to the letter, that letter will kill like any other. You've got to take it as the Word of God, love it, obey it. And then it's life-giving. So, I the Lord will be their God, and my servant David shall be their prince among them. I the Lord have spoken. That's a solemn vow. That's going to happen. So that's why Jesus starts... I am the good shepherd. The one my father predicted, that's me. I'm here now. You see? Uh, and now he describes this good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. 
Now, this is almost unintelligible, and I mean, uh, unvisualable, I should say, not unintelligible. I don't know now, I haven't been back to the Holy Land for several years now, and it was changing so fast, but in, in the central part, and then up in the north as well, there were shepherds who spent all day with their flock, watching out for them. Sheep, as you may know, are pretty dumb animals. They're not bright. They're nice, but they're dumb. And they do wander off. you got to go find them and bring them back. And if you don't, there are wolves, and the wolves will eat them. I mean, I know that. The farmers in Canada uh, keep sheep. And, uh, and there are wild dogs up there. And so, once in a while, a farmer loses a sheep. They're killed and eaten. So they go to the government to get uh, recompense. Uh, but uh, it's the same thing he's saying here. You see, the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. He's so intent on preserving these sheep that he'll fight those wolves off. Uh, whereas the hired hand, uh, who's uh, not the shepherd, and these are not his sheep, taprobata idia, they are not idia, you know, we get idiorhythmic from that. They're not his own sheep, you see. He sees the wolf coming, and he leaves the sheep and flees. How do they translate that? Runs away, it's really, you know, fake deep. Runs away. And the, and, the, and the wolf catches and scatters them. As I say, when I lived there, there were still Shepherds, old-fashioned shepherds, you know, with their flock. And they'd watch them all day, and they'd watch them, and they'd bring them in at night. And uh, and they had a call. Every shepherd has his own call. That's why three or four shepherds can make a, a paddock, a sheepfold. You can put all the sheep in there, and in the morning, Joe goes this way, Harry goes this way, Jim goes this way, with their call, and their sheep follow them. Just their sheep. Well, how do the little ones learn? The older ones teach them. That's why our Lord says, see, my sheep recognize my voice and they'll follow me. They won't follow anybody else. Isn't it great then to be intimate with the Lord and recognize Him? So when stuff comes down that is wrong, illicit, immoral, you know, that's not the voice of the Lord. I'm not going to follow that. You see, that's what He's saying here. This is a promise, you see. Um, I am the good shepherd and I know mine and mine know me. Isn't that wonderful? Do you know Jesus? Yes. Wonderful. You see? Just as, and this is, you see, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. Do you understand how deep that is? The relationship between myself and one of my sheep is like the relationship is caught up into sort of a share in the relationship between my father and me. I know the father totally and completely in a completely loving movement toward him from all eternity and the father loves me that way. That's the way my sheep love me and I love my sheep forever. This is an eternal day reading these Gospels. They know me forever, you see. And I lay down my sheep, my, my, I lay down my, my life, my soul, uh, for the, the sheep. And then the vision extends. And now we understand how many times our Lord stepped out of Israel and healed, or healed non-Israelites in the town, in the, within the confines of Israel. You remember the centurion? He's a Roman soldier. Probably a Syriac, Syrian, working, you know, mercenary, working for Rome. They don't have to bring all the Italians over there. They just hire some Syrians. So, and they, uh, and uh, this centurion, and he comes, and Jesus, I'll come and, and, no, no, just stay right here where they are. This is why it's nice to have that back in the communion. Huh? I'm not worthy to have you come under my roof. The Lord likes to hear that. He knows that's true, but he's going to come anyway. So, 
Just say the word, my servant will be healed. Okay? And Jesus is thrilled. I haven't found this kind of faith in Israel. You see? So, that's the background for this text, you see? Uh, uh, and I must, the other sheep I've got, and I must lead them. So there'll be one flock uh, and one shepherd. That's why the Father loves me. Because I lay down my life for my sheep. That I can take it up again. My Father gave me this command, right? From all eternity. Lay down your life for those human beings. Restore them to our favor. Bring them back to my heart. And he said, yes, I will go, Father. I will gladly do that. And that's why it says, right? When he comes into the world, he says, I will do, to do your will is my delight, my Lord, my Father. From the psalm, right? I've come to work this will of yours. That's why Luke tells us, after the resurrection, he visits them in the upper room. They're all thrilled to death. And he said, did not the, 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 the Christ have to suffer and so enter it? Why does he have to? The will of the Father. The plan of the Father. So, you see, uh, for this reason the Father uh, loves that I lay down my life, my soul, that I may take it up again. No one takes it away from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I'm not just a common crook they're going to catch and crucify. I am the Lord of glory. And I will submit to this hideous, lonely death out of love so that you can be eternally with me. And we will sing and praise together. I am the Son of God. I am the Word of God. I am the cantor in heaven. I lead all the praise back to the Father. Because I am, by nature, back to the Father. And so, uh, nobody takes this from me. I lay it down to my own accord. I have the power to lay it down and the power to take it up. This is the, the uh, command I have from my Father. To lay down my life and take it up again. Or, which is true, he's God. Most of the time we speak about the Father raising him up. You know, but they, he's got this, he's divine. And he goes through this for us. Now, this is supposed to be Good Shepherd Sunday. And the communion antiphon, if it still is, I didn't look, I forgot. I am the Good Shepherd. Just what we have here. And I know mine. And I laid down my life for them. Isn't it nice to know the Lord cares for us that much? And if we wander off, you know, he'll say, you jerk, but he'll come and get us, put us on his shoulder and bring us back. You have to fight to get away from him. And please don't fight him. Don't do that. Stay with him. And know this real happiness in this life, that the Son of God loves me with an affection. He has affection for me. Let him show you that affection. It will change your life. Once you know the Lord God himself loves you with divine and human affection, you're different. And that's why this is called Good Shepherd Sunday. Because he goes after us with his love to bring us back and to bring us to the Father. Amen.